Hey, 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 hello everyone. All right, it's another Sunday evening and it's time to connect. Wow. How's everybody doing? It's, um, it's great to have you all join us today. And I can see that we're live on Facebook. I'm checking my dashboard. We're live on LinkedIn. YouTube, I see you as well. So we are live. It's Sunday, and it's the first Sunday in July. And I promise you that we'll start in July with a bang, and it is The Connect. It's amazing to be here, and I'm just super glad, super, super glad uh, to be here. Loads of stuff that, you know, um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you. And it's just simply, simply going to be amazing sharing time with you. Um, today today i trust that your your week went well i trust that you had an amazing sunday and that you're doing fabulous and you're ready to connect with me and my crew all right so hey everyone it's great to be here it's fantastic to all good morning good afternoon good evening uh, depending on wherever you are in the world uh, my name is au as you already know and i'm super glad to be hosting you yet again this Sunday um, on, you know, my uh, live virtual fireside charts call for connect. All right. And we have an amazing, amazing lineup um, for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about leadership. And first of all, let me congratulate everybody for making it into the month of July. We've crossed six months, you know, and I can tell you, all right, I can already tell you that the harvest of everything that you planted in the first six months, regardless of whether you saw the results or not, you're about to step into the manifest harvest, all right, into great growth, into massive manifestation, all right, and I hope that uh, this is something that's you will be able to embrace and to take on. So I wish you all the very best in the second half of the year, even as I wish myself the very best in the second half of the year as well. All right, so I'm looking forward to an amazing episode ahead of me. We are having the leadership conversation, all right, the leadership conversation this Sunday. And I have, um, I'm going to be filling and populating the studio very soon. Shout out to uh, my coach, all right, who, when I was trying to put some thoughts together today, uh, I was able to get on the phone and, you know, have a conversation with my coach. And um, and I got the kind of help that I needed. To all the coaches in the world, big up to you. Great salutations. All right, then, we're going to get straight into it. Quite a bit of conversation that we have tonight. And we have just about an hour to execute and to do the assignment that we have. All right, so it promises to be a super great one. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this episode. And I hope that you are as well. All right, then we're going to get straight to it. So this, this week, we're having a conversation about leadership. And I'll tell you something. I was just online a couple of weeks ago, and I stumbled upon my guests, all my guests today. They were in a live show just as this, and they were talking about leadership. And I listened to the things that they shared, and I was like, such brilliant minds, you know, such in depth such you know and, and i was like you know what i just sent them an open invitation and say you guys have to be on the connect and good enough as god will have it they honored my invitation and they're here with me today it's amazing i already have quite a number of them in the waiting room already i'm going to be bringing them on pretty soon and um you know we're going to get it on so i'm going to go straight to it like i said the conversation this this sunday is on leadership and one of the things I know is that one of the most researched topics and, and perhaps one of the most talked about topics um, on earth is leadership because man is always trying to understand the rudiments of leadership, the principles of leadership, what leadership is and what leadership is not, how to best apply leadership, what, what kind of leadership style works best for what kind of person. And there's always been just that quest for knowledge as regards what leadership is and how best and how effective and efficient it can be. What does it really deliver? What are the rewards of good leadership? Uh, what are the outcomes of bad leadership? And, you know, and all of that. And how does good turn to bad? And how do you turn bad leadership to good leadership? What does it really take to be a good leader? You know, you hear that, hey, the greatest problem that we have in Nigeria today is leadership. And you're wondering to yourself that is it that the people that are at the helms of leadership just decided to be bad leaders? 
he sits, does it, what does it have to do with competence? Uh, what does it have to do with the desire, the will, the intent, the motive? What does it have to do with priority? What does it have to do with selflessness? How much price has to be paid for leadership? And how many people are truly willing to pay the price of leadership or the price to leadership? You know, so there's a whole lot that we could probably talk about today. And I don't want to preempt uh, what my super guests, you know, are going to be sharing with us today. So I'm going to jump straight to the waiting room and I will bring in my guests one after the other. So I'm just going to have a look at the waiting room. Meanwhile, um, if you are on Facebook, if you are on LinkedIn, if you're on YouTube, please send me a comment right now. Let me know what platform you're, you're watching from. Say hello so I can say hello back to you as well. Uh, come on, just holler at me before I bring in the guests. So wherever you're watching from, just type in the message in the comment section and um, I'll be waiting to hear from you, waiting to read from you and waiting to respond to you as well. All right, so I'm gonna go straight to the waiting room and I'm going to be bringing in the first of my guests. All right, so I have a four, four man party here. All right, so George Asian. George Asian, it's great to have you join us. George is a super, super friend of mine. And someone is doing a lot of stuff, uh, both in the leadership space and in the sales space and personal performance. Um, a well-rounded guy is certainly someone that I'm very proud of. So well done, George. Great to have you. And thank you for joining uh, the live stream. OK, so the first guest I'm bringing in um, to the studio all right, the first guest I'm bringing into the studio, let me run through the profile. My first guest is, uh, hold on now, wait for it, wait for it. No. Okay, so the, the, the first person I'm bringing in is, is someone who, who's a lawyer by profession, all right, is an advocate of good governance, uh, by conviction and the leadership enthusiast by passion. So I'm going to take that all over again. He's a lawyer by profession, an advocate of good governance by conviction, and a leadership enthusiast by passion. He provides strategic guidance on leadership for youth groups and student union bodies from the area of experience he garnered through his involvement in governance at the micro level. Uh, from effectively representing the faculty of law, the Students' Union Senate, to his role as head of assembly of the scholar, a personality development group, and later as president of the Law Students Association of Nigeria, um, is renowned to always have given his best. The progenitor of the mission mantra, um, he's the author of Leadership in the Board, a classic on leadership in the students' community. And it's something that a lot of people need to read to understand how leadership at the micro level functions. And basically just listen to his story uh, to have an insight to his leadership journey, which is something that will provide invaluable information for everybody that is interested in one area of leadership or the other. All right, his modest contributions to the conversations of leadership include, but not limited to the leadership growth curve uh, leadership as a day's journey and the body parts theory of leadership. When he's not discussing law uh, and leadership, he engages in conversations around policy analysis and implementation strategies. To further this interest, um, he co-founded the African Youth Policy Council and took a volunteer role as vice president and country representative. He has also recently been nominated to sit on the advisory board of T Nation Nigeria, T Nation NG. He blogs, he writes, he speaks on areas of personal development as well as a way of impacting his field of influence to be better than uh, where they are, and certainly someone that I would call a bridge. All right. Who am I talking about? None other than I call him Gideon the Great, Gideon Eden, and I'm going to bring him right up into the studio right now all right so gideon the great how are you doing <laughs> thank you so much hey, you i'm happy to be here so happy to be here i'm amazing amazing that was quite a profile that i just read out i mean and i'm just wondering how did you how did you manage to fix all that in such a short time you know and all of that and having 
there's a lot involved there. That some things must have been multi-layered. You must have been doing multiple things at the same time whilst driving this. And it's so amazing. I can tell you up front that I'm extremely proud of you and I'm looking forward to engaging you in the conversation tonight. But don't 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 move just yet. Don't move just yet. I've got a couple of other I've got a couple of other people that I want to bring on board. And so I'm going to go back to the waiting room and see who else is ready for me. And then I will uh, bring them on board as well. All right. So. All right. Oh, we have oh we have the great Jennifer Bassi here. She says, hi, Gideon Adam. Welcome. I, 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 what, what, Jennifer, I don't get a welcome to. I'm just joking. All right. So I've got another amazing Amazing person, all right? So let, let, let's look at that. Now, this person I'm bringing on is currently, all right, currently the first female president. So we have some massive achievers in the house. Currently the first female president of the prestigious faculty of arts in the University of Rio, Nigeria. Um, her journey in school leadership and politics started when she became a member of the parliament of the faculty of arts and subsequently the president, first female president, madam president of the faculty. Of the faculty. Uh, she's a leadership enthusiast and volunteer who loves to contribute her quota, however little, to a worthy cause for a greater good. Sounds amazing, all right? Um, she's a love of Christ and humanity and a budding public speaker. All right, so I got a lot of public speakers in the house today, amazing. The alumnus of the Moore Leadership Academy, where I'm also fortunate to be one of the um, visiting facilitators, um, is a serial award winner. She was awarded the Foster Union New York 2021 Achiever of the Year, amongst several other awards. An avid lover of football, amazing. So we'll discuss a bit of football tonight, right? An avid lover of football, she enjoys listening to music, traveling, and trying out new cuisines and networking with friends. Uh, May A Z. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor for the first time. By the way, aside from uh, one of the guests, everybody's a first timer on the connect, apart from one person. Everybody's a first timer. So Gideon is a first timer too. So for on our first time to the connect, our very first time to the connect. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make most warmly welcome Madam President Christy Akban. All right, so we're bringing Christy into the studio right now. Amazing. Hello. Amazing. <laughs> Good Christy. evening, sir. Thank you. It's great to have you here, and um, it's amazing. It's amazing to have you. It's good to see you, Madam President. It's good to see you, sir, AU, and it's Charity Akpa, not Christy. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Um, Jennifer Bassi was, was distracting me. It's Charity Akpa. All right, great. So, Charity, <laughs> I, will, I will be with you. I was reading Jennifer's comments. Let me put it up um, so that we can all see. I'm reading okay. Jennifer's comments a bit. And Jennifer says, hello, Mr. AU. I must spam your comment section with amazing comments. Right on. <laughs> okay, we're with him. All right, so... <laughs> I've got I've got this amazing um, gentleman. I've got this amazing gentleman that I met many years ago, and um, when I met him years ago, he, he, he was just possibly at that time um, starting his journey. Okay, um, charity, could you meet your mic? Could you meet my charity? All right, great, charity, just meet your mic for a second. All right, so I met this amazing gentleman. Uh, a few years ago, he was he was someone that I just found myself drawn to. He came to me and he, he literally just said, Mr. AU, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn from you. And I'm like, who is this okay, fantastic guy? And then over the years, I have just had a front row seat to seeing the amazing grace of God upon his life, to see how he has grown in leaps and bounds. Um, especially to the subject matter of leadership. He's one that has shown so much strength amongst his peers and definitely someone that stands out. I'm going to be reading his profile in a bit. And um, I just want you to, you know, he's really someone that's very dear to me. All right, so he's a leadership enthusiast. And as you will notice, everybody that I've brought in today is a leadership enthusiast. Shout out to Mrs. Akron Etuk. I love you, Auntie. All right, so... This young man 
is a leadership enthusiast, is a consultant, is a speaker, is a writer. He's the host of the Leadership Master Class, the LMC. Um, and again, I've been privileged and graced to have been a guest speaker and a keynote speaker at a few of his events. A workshop that is geared towards building and building the young towards excellent leadership by means of training amongst others. Um, he's the convener of the Young Leaders Summit, YLS, um, a convergence of young leaders and aspiring leaders uh, from diverse walks of life, from diverse walks of life to enhance the reason of young balanced leaders uh, for the betterment of society and the nation at large. He studied human resource management and project management at Taraba Business School. He's the strategic administrator and administrative staff at Ajim Consult. He currently serves in the strategic follow-up and data analysis unit at God's House of Refuge as head of department. He's God-fearing, uh, uh, people-driven, and is a passionate young man. He promotes self-leadership and organizational leadership. He's purpose, uh, uh, and he believes that, you know, with all of his heart, his purpose is to aid the raising of young balanced leaders to attain success in leadership. And he has been consistent at this. And like I said, I've had a front row seat to his consistency, to his resilience, his tenacity, to his steady upward growth in this area. He's an award-winning thought leader. And by reason of what he does in the past few years, he's been able to impact the lives of so many people um, in the space that he is, in the quiet state and even beyond. He's someone that I'm definitely proud to call my own. And it's my joy and honor for the second time, for the second time to the connect, I do believe, for the second time as a guest. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul, the apostle of leadership, Paul Uda. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, Thank oh, you so much, great. AU. <laughs> it's great to have you. People are already screaming in the in the, in the comment section, like, oh. It's great People to be here. People are already screaming in the comment section. And it's amazing. We, 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 I need to, um, I need to check. I'm waiting for one more person in, um, one more person to join us. And I believe that once she comes in, we'll be able to bring her in. All right, so let's start off this conversation. As soon as the last person comes, I'll bring her to the studio. It's amazing, guys. And it's great to have each and every one of you here. So we're having a conversation on leadership. All right, we're having a conversation on leadership, and we're going to start right away. I'm going to start with Paul. So Paul came in last. I'll start with him, and then I'll circle through charity and then get to Gideon in a bit. Paul, I'm going to start with you. Um, what was... And this is the same question I will ask everybody. Where and how did your foray, your interests, your passion, your appetite for the concepts and the subject matter of leadership, how and where did it start from? I'm going to start with Paul. Okay. Yeah, thank ahead, thank you so much for uh, the privilege of being on the Connect tonight. Thank you again for being on the Connect uh, tonight. Uh, where it began for me was, um, without taking much time, uh, be it began for me 2019, when I met with you at the, at the conference uh, with Kalu Godwin at the Influence Connect, uh, Influence Summit, where he hosted a lot of other thought leaders on the subject of leadership and influence and so uh, in the midst of your your teaching, the things that you taught with us that day, it, it, you, at, you, at one point you began to hammer on the need for the next generation, right? You, you, were, you were pushing and pushing the need for us to begin to consider uh, uh, the generation that is coming after us. And with, with that, with that, uh, that line of thought that you gave, I, I made up my mind that guy, I've I've got to start thinking the next the next generation. I've I've got to start being involved in raising people for the next generation. So I've spent mm -hmm. quite a lot of time working on and learning and on my craft, the aspect of leadership. I've spent time working, but I just kept it. I was one of those people who would just hold their giftings, keep it, restrict them with themselves, and not be a part of anybody's life. 
right? But as soon as I left that conference 2019, where you had made us most importantly to make a promise that going forward, we're going to do one or two things and intentionally to, towards the, blend, the, the, the lifting and the raising of a new generation. And that, for me, was where it began. That, that, that move, that, uh, that zeal, that passion, that's where I got it. Secondly, it was that we don't have much time, right? So we've got, we've got to do it now, right now, not tomorrow, not procrastinate. So we've got to do it now. And for me, that was, that was it for me, 2019. So we started in 2020 after your, uh, this, this, this seminar with you on 2019, and which I came to ask that I, I want to learn. Mr. AU, I'm here to learn. I want to become uh, someone who does what you do. I want to begin to bless my generation just like you do. And so that for me was a striking force. That for me was the spark. And that has landed us where we currently are tonight. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And, and, and I'm really proud to be, you know, a catalyst in your journey and to be the, to be a part of your journey as well. And, I, you know, I cast my mind back to that day. And I remember that um, I'd been up all night. It was the night after the experience. And um, I came in for a wedding and you met me. If you remember, you met me at the reception of the wedding and then we got yeah. talking. And that yeah. was when you told me your heart desire and the things that you wanted. And I said, okay, let's see, yes, let's start this journey. And I'm extremely proud to have been um, such a catalyst in your journey. I'm going to go over to, so, so Paul, I want you to hold your thoughts. I'm going to go over to Charity right now. Um, I can see Princess in the waiting room, but I'm waiting for her to get ready with our um, cameras and all of that. Then I'll bring Princess in. So I'm going to go to Charity. All right, so Charity... First of all, you are a ceiling breaker. You are a barrier breaker. You are a limitation chartra. You're the first female president of a faculty. And that must be, you know, you know, here's the thing about being the first. The first is that you're trade, you're trading on a lonely path. You're going down a pathway that has never been gone before. And so people are looking to see, okay, are you gonna be able to hold this fort or not? In other words, the expectation on your leadership abilities and your leadership competencies are enhanced, are heightened, and everything you see or every mistake along the way, all right, becomes something that, um, you know, is thrown up and everybody sees. How has the journey been for you? Before we come back to the beginning, tell me, first of all, how the journey of being the first female president has been, and, um, you know, we'll take it from there. All right. Um, thank you very much. Good evening to our AU. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you for having me on the Connect. Yes, how's the journey been for me? Um, as the first female president of the Faculty of Arts, well, I would say, for one, it has been very interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one that likes to pay um, attention to the journey. Yes, because I believe that there are lessons to be learned. It's not just about today. There are lessons I would gather now for um, the um, uh, for the future. So how has the journey been? Well, it has been. It has come with its own challenges, no doubt. I am. Uh, I I remember when I got sworn in. No, when I won the election, I remember going. Um, I got to the house and I kept telling myself, "It's not about being president." You, you, you are the, when they put it out there, they do well to mention that you are the first female. So you are like um, a pace setter. So I, I, I was aware of the pressure and expectations of, um, expected of me because I also didn't want to be um, a case that would close the door to others because I knew quite well that my performance would determine in, to some extent, if they're going to accept another um, a woman coming into power, is going to determine that. So I, I told myself that I was going to give it my best. Yeah, I prayed about it. I was going to give it my best. So far, in, um, initially, you know, people were skeptical. Like, what can she do? What can um, can she um, withstand all the pressures and all? Well, I guess I came prepared. <laughs> there were times when. Um, I, 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 it almost became um, overwhelming. But anytime um, I felt like 
breaking anytime i felt like giving up i just had to go back to the house shut myself um, from the world from the rest of the world and remind myself the reason why i went on this journey in the first place because part of it was also to contribute my quota to also show that um this thing is not just um a man thing. I mean, let it be open. Let's just break the ceiling, shut it. Let it be open to anybody who is competent. I needed them to know that, okay, now beyond gender, you have to look at important things, competence, which is one, and um, a value that this person has. So yes, it has been an interesting journey. It has stressed me personally. It has stressed me. It has exposed me to um, an area um, of me that I didn't quite pay attention to. Like leadership, leadership has always come natural to me, but before now, I didn't think that I could pursue it to the point where um, I would want to be like an authority. I'm not saying I am an authority, but I like to think that um, um, I, I am on that path. I, I, this is what I want, this is what I like. But before now, I did see it as a thing just thought, okay, providence will just happen and you'll find your place of leadership. But now I, it has taught me to be intentional about it. So yes, the journey has been what every um, bit of it. It has, it has um, stretched me, exposed me. And yes, it has been a beautiful ride. <laughs> All right, congratulations. <laughs> I, I think uh, Ms. AU is um, a bit off now, but um, you might want to also speak to the issue of where it started for you. Um, I He mentioned that you should speak to the issue of where it started for you. What was that important thing that you know, you know, started your leadership? I think you should speak to that. Okay, um, thank you, Gideon. Um, I, I like to think that um, leadership kind of like thrust itself on me. Yes, I mean, from the home front this time around, I am I'm the eldest and ever since oh, wow. um, I lost my God, ever since I lost both parents, I happen to um, have lost my parents quite early in life and was charged with the responsibility of um, directing, taking care of my siblings. So it's, um, it didn't quite give me much of a choice, you know, and you know what they say, you don't know how strong you are until being <laughs> strong is the only option you have. So um, yes, leadership kind of like thrust itself on me and I couldn't give up. I, I just can't. I have siblings looking up to me. So I think it came to me naturally. And then when I got into school, I, I discovered that I'm somebody that likes to get involved naturally. I like to get involved in things. I just don't like to take a passive role on anything. When I am a part of a team, I like to, you know, be a part of it, not just be there as if I am not there. And then one day I... Um, I, happened, I came across um, one of Dr. Mount's Monroe's messages, be change agent. He was talking to the church, um, telling urgent Christians to be, to get involved. You cannot be an agent of change if you're outside of it. You have to be inside to effect any change that you want to see. And it kind of like spoke to me very personally that, okay, if I am going to, um, do yeah. anything at all. I'm not going to do that from the outside. So um, I think that was what spurred me to ensure that anywhere I find myself, and anytime I think I have something to offer, I must offer it without hesitation. Wow, so great. Well, well done. Let, let me comment. Let me comment before I think I get to answer the question because Mr. A, you I amazing. think have some points to I'm going I'm, I'm going to I'm going to come back to you, right? Okay, okay, Gideon, go ahead. Okay, so I think at some point they were all programs, so I, ahead, I think uh, a, a bit of it just played out because um, natural is to be a chaos when you let, but um, being that um, people should try to you know take <laughs> people should be trying to take 
and you know to take up responsibility when you left um there was a bit of control so that shows i've always learned that it does not have to be everywhere um but it should be felt everywhere so even when you left and charity finished i still felt your presence and the, the conversation <laughs> went went on so it's not that <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> great, 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 great. But, but good thing is, good thing is, the, the beauty of it is that you were next to speak. So I'm going to yield the mic to you, Gideon, and then you take it out there. So Gideon, the same question applies to you. Uh, what, what was it exactly that, um, and I'm, co- I'm going to come back to you, Charity, in a bit, but Gideon, what was it exactly that birthed this leadership journey in you. We had a conversation yesterday whilst we were doing the test run. And you know, just just a very it was a very brief but very impactful conversation because I kept thinking about the things you said to me. So I'm gonna ask you that yeah. same question again. What was the journey? What was it that of it was it something that you just woke up one morning and you had this this unquenchable desire to you know go into concept of leadership or was it that you had worked for a while and then you look back and realize oh my god I, I, i'm a leader i mean was what was it how did it start gideon uh thank you mr au for this question um unlike um, um charity who is the best child of, um, at home i am the last child <laughs> so i did really learn how to take responsibility um early enough I, I, w- I wouldn't say i was born a leader i didn't take responsibility early enough um i was i got a lot of things you know being done for me and all of that so getting into school for me i feel it was char- um, char- character and charisma i it was more of my my charisma and people were drawn to me a bit so i didn't even realize that still, you know you got points where um, something happened in class and I had to take a street ship. That's when I realized that, oh, that was the first time I had ever owned a dog. So I was the okay, of the class. I guess that was in SS1. We had this very teacher, Mr. Rex, who everybody <laughs> and you get. And on this day, I went into class. Before then, um, I had to preparing the roster, who should sweep the kernel of that during break. So I had prepared a roster, but people, nobody showed up to, you know, um, do their role. And he showed up and asked who were the people that should have, you know, cleaned the class. And for the first time in my life, I tell him that, oh, although um, that I'm, I'm responsible for it, I'm responsible for the fact that others didn't see. I wasn't the roster, but I just thought that speaking to him would, you know, take the whole burden away. And he called me and really lashed me. Lashed me about six strokes. <laughs> and to be honest, I didn't really feel, I didn't feel bad that I took the struggle in behalf of others. That's the first time I, I really took responsibility for other people. And after that, I noticed that, you know, people started coming to me, particularly because of um, my charisma and the way I related with them. And beyond that, beyond that, I believe that um, there are a lot of ways that makes people, you know, feel like they're leaders. Um, for me, it was because in school, I was one of the high flyers without sounding modest. I was one of the high flyers. I had good results in my secondary school so um it, it brought people closer to me to find out oh what are you doing that i'm not doing and all of that and in secondary school then people um the, the teachers naturally would give um the positions of head boy and assistant head boys to people who did well in academics so when i was given that position as assistant head boy basically because i was doing well in my studies i had to take responsibility I had to start showing the example. So it was something that fell on me and I had to run with it. It got into the university and the same thing happened. After my first semester, without also something about it, I had very good grades. So people, you know, kind of gravitated towards me and they felt like, oh, um, is this something you can do and all of that. So I knew that if I don't prune my character, if I don't get, um, you know, a hold of every other thing, I don't last long. So it made me to, you know, develop my leadership competence. It made me to start reading books. And before long, I was stepping into the race to contest as senator representing my faculty in 200. And to be honest, it was something that has never happened. Um, we, in faculty of law, you are to get into 300 level before, like a convention. But the constitution allowed someone in 200 level. 
So when I stepped into the race, I had a lot of pressure from the senior colleagues to step out. So my colleagues were like, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. So even when I had a lot of you know, pressure, I decided to run the race. And they felt like, oh, you just stepped into the lions and you helped the, <laughs> the tigers, you know. So I felt like I, I was bold enough like I, I could, you know, walk into situations and, you know, speak to them and speak to their issues. So for me, it was those circumstances and the fact that I really loved the people that worked with me. Thank you. Great. Now, my mic was muted earlier. You know, and I like the, I like the beat, um, Gideon, you know, where you always say, you know, your love for the people and how the people... And, you know, you're the man of the people and then the people and, you know, leadership primarily is hinged on influence and influence has to do with how you can get the people to bring their. Um, OK, so we had a We had a bit of we have a comment here that says that your network was breaking. I noticed it as well. Um, someone else noticed it. So I, I don't think they had quite everything that you, you said, you didn't, but we'll come back to that in a bit. But one of the things that you had mentioned was, you know, about the role people played, being people-driven, um, having the people in mind whenever there was any move you were about to make. And, and I was saying that leadership is primarily, you know, hinged on influence, and influence is getting people to bring their best to a common vision, meaning that as a leader, your responsibility is to give hope to a people that gets them to release their best to a common vision so that you can all get a desired outcome. And that's really what leadership is. If you look at it whichever way or whatever context it is. So it's a good thing yeah. that you were able to recognize the role of people, you know, because there's no leadership without the people. And if you're truly mm -hmm. trying to get people to do it, then you have to be people conscious. You have to be people driven meaning that it is not just what's easy for the people, but what is best. And so a leader has that responsibility to be able to determine what is best for a people and to marshal out a way for a people to move. So I just wanted to throw that in. I'm going to come to Paul, all right? I'm going to come to Paul. So Paul, you are also someone that's people driven. I mean, you have this desire, you've been running these master classes and these programs where you're getting everybody involved and you're doing trainings because you believe that one of the things that you need to do to be able to get better leaders is to build their competence. And so you yes. run training programs, right? That gets them yes. to be able to build capacity and that they can function as better leaders. So Paul, here's a, my question to you. What exactly, how do you determine how effective those trainings have been and how, what's your plan to scale up those trainings? Are you okay with the level at which it is? Um, how do you determine how effective it is? And if you see that it's effective, what are your plans to be able to scale up those trainings to ensure that they can even deliver more to a greater number of people? Paul. All right, sir. So um, there, there, was, there was this perspective that I, I described before we began our first ever um, outing. By outing, I mean um, uh, on-site trainings that we do. Uh, prior to that time, we've always been doing writings, 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 writings. And for me, it's th th those, those parts, those writings were, were very, very uh, uh, foundational to everything that I do as a person, is to ensure that people's perspectives are built. People's perspectives are put in into proper structural into i made better so uh, mm -hmm. we began with writing we saw that yeah uh, the the motive the agenda that agenda people carried into leadership was beginning to change and so we, we that motive the motive when i speak of motive I, I speak specifically to the concept of wanting to to boss over people and not lead mm -hmm. them act uh, accurately so all the writings that we that we made, all the publications that we made in the year 2020 during the COVID, we 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 streamlined towards um, ensuring that building people um, be, people being built in leadership and not just attainment of tasks uh, was actually flogged ex extensively. Then we decided to scale it up towards the on-site meeting where we would see people, get to know people in person, get to get others 
to come in uh, other leaders like we did with um, Gideon Edem, we did with, um, with, with Mr. AU, we've done with others, to so come in, bring your perspective because I have worked with um, Gideon Edem, I've, I've studied him for quite a while, amazing thing that he does, his book, amazing. So I said, oh, come, come and join me. Let's, let's collaborate, let's, let's synergize and then bring this balanced perspective you've had in leadership and let's help to impact lives yeah, so we, we, we did that. We did that with the on-site trainings. And we, we noticed clearly that from despite the feedbacks we constantly received, despite the feedbacks of, oh, thank you for this that you've done, thank you for the classes, we, we, we observed a different kind of feedback with the classes. That so you see, people were, who were who were young leaders in in the in the academic sector, people who were young leaders in organizations, will come and then take those trainings, take what they've taught, what they've learned, and go and practice. So we saw that there were massive massive productivity, and so we continued with the trainings, we continued with the sessions, and yes, we are we are definitely thinking of upscaling. We are definitely planning to upscale, which is why we. Since we've seen that what we do is changing perspective, and not just that it is helping people to become better leaders, helping them to express their, and maximize their potentials. So um, one thing that my, that my coming forth did for a lot of people like my, 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 peer, my, my peers was that it encouraged them to move out and, and start something with their ideas. Yes, you've had this idea locked down in you for a long time, but them seeing a fellow young man doing what it is that he's doing and doing it consistently has, has motivated others to, to push. So yes, have they been, um, have they been good, uh, uh, have, they, have they been testimonies from what we've done? Yes. Have they been, have they been um, pro progress made? Yes. Others are doing what, what it is that they've been, they've, been, they've been having in their hearts to do. And we've stayed at it consistently. We've also incorporated doing tours, taking what we do since it's working here in Uyo, we've incorporated doing tours to Eket, to Ekotek Pene, to Oweri, to um, Port Harcourt, to Calabar. And, and that's what we're going to do this year just to upscale, to take these same things we've taught and then rebrand them a bit more and take them to others who require these things that we've said. So, yes, that is it, sir. Amazing. I mean, it gladdens my heart totally, absolutely, Paul. It gladdens my heart to know that, you know, there's impact. The impact is measurable because my challenge with a lot of things that people do is they can't even measure. And if you can't measure the impact, how can you determine how well you're doing? How do you determine yeah. which areas you need to grow? how to be able to allocate resources, uh, what your selling point is, and therefore what your unique selling point becomes from there. Where do you have a niche? Uh, because, you, you know, people do a lot of things, but don't take, don't, can't quantitate them. Um, a lot of them are very qualitative, but when it comes to quantitative, it's difficult uh, for people to measure. And I'm glad that you've been able to put parameters in place as regards scaling up what you're doing. Let me cross over to charity. All right, charity has been should be should be doing press ups and waiting to go. And I just have one question for charity first of all before I trickle down to other questions. What has your greatest challenge been? Because you know, look, listen. Let me tell you something, right? I understand leadership. I serve in lead. I've been serving in leadership capacity for 22 years in different sphere, and it is a very let me let, let me say it as clearly as I can. Sometimes it's a very lonely journey. Did you hear me? Can you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? It's a very <laughs> lonely journey. Sometimes your people don't very understand lonely. you. You know, I was having a conversation with um, Gideon yesterday, and I was talking about. Um, we celebrate leaders at the end of the day when it's all done. Everybody puts their hands together for leaders. But we forget to talk about how really underappreciated leaders are during the process. So even the people that they are leading grumble. I mean, I, I gave him the example of, of, of the Exodus, Moses, and who is this guy? Has it actually taken us to? Why didn't you leave us there? I, this is, I mean, he had a great life. He gave up his great life because of you. And now he's coming to... So now, here's my question. How challenging has this been for you? Not just that because you're the first female president, which is challenging in itself, but how challenging has this been for you as a leader, Charity? All right. Um, 
Oh wow! <laughs> now I'm going to try and put it um, to uh, words. All right. Um, when I um, got into leadership position, and I knew that okay, this is what I want. This is what I like. So beyond being president, beyond this, this is just like a platform. Beyond this, I I, I have to. Um, I, I aim for more. So I just have to do well now. I have to start now. I have to start from here and think like I am there. So I, I knew that I could not do things the way, I, there just has to be something different. Like I had to do it how I, I would like, the way it, is to, uh, it should be done when I am where I want to be. So um, leading, for the student community, yes, that's going to be my case study, I mean, yeah, so for the student community, leading the students and trying to get them to think from their individual um, interest to something, um, to that of the common good, like telling them, okay, see, you're going to put behind um, individualism now, and let's just think about the people. Those people... Um, closest to me, the people um, in my inner circle in the in leadership, if I, I remember we, I would always call meetings and meetings trying to talk to them. Okay, one thing I know they and I think they can also agree to is I kept on repeating that this is going to be selfless. It's going to be a selfless kind of leadership. We're going to give our all. Because um, when I stepped into um, the leadership of the Faculty of Arts, before now, there have been cases of presidents not graduating, issue of money and all of that, embezzlement of funds. So I told them that, okay, that um, channel, I am going to close it for our good. Mm. I am going to close it. We are not going to go after money. This is life. My, my staff advisor, my dean, they can all watch this. They can confirm it. I told them, okay, we, we're not going to look at money. We're going to do everything that we're going to do. And I can say this openly till now, I have not yet gotten the budget allocation meant for president. But I have done things even when I have not gotten the money because, and it was difficult, very difficult, you know, because people were like, they needed, that was their motivation before now. So trying to get them to look beyond that financial and that material thing as motivation to um, just serving the people, seeing service to the people as their motivation was really difficult. A lot of people accused me, they thought I was trying to do that so that I could go behind and you know just keep and take everything to myself for myself. But I, I tried to make sure the, the process was um transparent, you know. So getting people to think beyond their individual interests, to think beyond their selfish interests, to think beyond this material motivation, to service to the people, to um um. Uh, a cause for the greater good was really very challenging. Moving them from what they are used to to selfless service men, I had to do a lot of preaching and preaching and talking, you know. But we scaled through. We, I would not say we successfully moved everybody because there will still be that one person who doesn't want to change, you know. There will still be that person. But I think I can say that in my um. Taking, um, for example, member of my executives, I think they, they, they are doing great. I can say that they've, they've been able to imbibe that culture of selfless service. And I can hit my chest and point to a most, um, few of them that are doing well. And it just gives me great joy to see that. All right, amazing. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna yeah. do for you, all right? Um, this just came to me as you were speaking. And this is to everybody, the same way I sent an open invitation to you guys to be here. I'm going to throw out something for you guys that are here. Um, Any time between now and the end of the year, um, I will do for any of you, free of charge, I will take a session for any group 
faculty, organization, anything that you're affiliated with, free of charge for any wow. of you guys. Wow. Yeah. wow. wow. <laughs> all all we have to do is just ensure that our calendars sync. All right. And once that's done, you know that if you ask me, I can't say no. The question is just when. You know, like I say all the time, if Paul calls me, I can't say no. If Paul asks me if I'm in the Enugu, Lagos, Abuja, and Paul says he needs me now, I can't say no. I can just say, Paul, when? Because that when just needs to fit into a calendar. Uh -huh. I can't say no to you guys. So I'm, I'm leaving this open to you guys. But before we go further, right? Before we go further, I have a little game that I want to play. And I like the fact that let me let me read something that um what one of the comments that they put up, Chemaka. Chemaka said transparent process and getting people to have a paradigm shift in the place of service. That's that's remarkable. And that's if if that's all that you do, if that's the legacy that you birth, then you've done well. If you're able to ensure and stand by transparent process, all right, because leadership must always be questioned. There is no lead. Any leader that doesn't want to be questioned is a despot. Is 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 a is a is a is, a, is not is a ruler. Is not a leader. Leadership is subject to being questioned. However, the questions make you golden because the questions show your transparency. Your the questions communicate your integrity. The questions manifest your dependability, and so you must be able to, as a leader, create a transparent process. That allows those, and I'm, and I'm, one thing that you said, charity, that really blows my mind, and I have adopted you just now. One of the things that really blows my mind is the fact that you are thinking of what your tenor will do to making a way for other females to come in, mm. and you're not just there and saying, "Oh, I've made it," and whatever I do here, it doesn't matter. Because I've noticed that every single time that leaders think of only themselves, they fail. Every time that you think of the next generation, the next set of people, the next, you'll be mindful. You know why? Because the future ultimately determines what you should do today. I've said that many times. Um, if you've been in any of the sessions that I take, today doesn't determine tomorrow. It's tomorrow that shall determine your today. Because of what your future is, oh. you take the steps today that lead you there. Because yeah. of what where you want to go to tomorrow. So those that just think that, well, what I do today will determine tomorrow are short-sighted, have peripheral intelligence or peripheral understanding of leadership, and at best, you know, will not function at their optimal with regards to leadership. But those that understand that their tomorrow ultimately decides what is appropriate and what is um, 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 acceptable and allowable in their today, uh, understand that, look, because so you understand that the first thing that you need as a leader is to have clear vision, clarity of vision. And once you have the clarity of vision, you cannot connect the dots from where you are to where you want to be. You can connect the dots from right now to your tomorrow. Because your tomorrow now becomes the framework, becomes the inspiration for what you do today. And if your inspiration is to leave a legacy, and I'm also blown away that you're talking about legacy already. Because even when I'm doing trainings these days, Paul can bear witness to it. I don't talk about vision much anymore. I talk about legacy. legacy. Because if people mm. who are more legacy-minded, I tell you to write mm. your legacy statement. I tell you, take your mind back, project yourself to the end of your tenure. If your tenure is for two years, for one year, I don't know, whatever it is, project yourself to the end of your tenure. Imagine your passing out or your handing over ceremony and imagine what people are saying about you. And they can't lie. So imagine what you want them to say. Charity was amazing she was a trailblazer she created she institutionalized processes in the department she gave us a constitution she gave us a manual she gave us a blueprint then come back to the present and begin to do the things today that will ensure that on the day you hand over that is what they say do you understand what i'm saying so yeah. your tomorrow is your inspiration for what you do today today doesn't determine tomorrow 
tomorrow determines today. today. For those that are rightly aligned, for those that are forward thinking, and for those that are heading anywhere significant. So when you have a mm. clear idea of what your tomorrow is, you will know the kind of steps you take today. I don't know things that you thought were smart for you to do today, but two months down the line, you're wondering, why did I even do that? It wasn't, it wasn't necessary. Not that it was bad, but it wasn't necessary. It was a mm. waste of resources. It was a waste of my time. It, I could have focused on something else. But you were doing it because you couldn't tell. You had a vague or a blurry picture of tomorrow. The first thing that every leader, guys, must do, the first thing is that before you run out, look, what are the things that determine leadership? I've said it many times. You have the vision, you have the mission, and you have your values. It's a tripod. Every other thing is embedded within that tripod. So your vision, which is the destination and the things that you hope to be able to achieve, is what needs to first be clear to you. And then what you require now is clarity. So what you do at that point is seek clarity or seek clarity to the point that by the time you get to the next level, you, be, you get a clearer picture. Because why is it important for you to have clarity? And I'll tell you why. Because I can hear you asking in your head. So I'll tell you why. It's important for you to have clarity of your vision because then you can know what direction to go in then you can even know what resources is allowed and what resources is allowable. You can know what to give to it and what not to give to it. You can know what to point to it and what not to point to it. If you're not clear about where you're going to, chances are that you'll run around in circles and you think that you are doing something and you will feel that you should be rewarded for doing something. And when you don't get a reward because you're not getting results. You get frustrated. You get bitter. And those who are bitter never get better. And so you remain where you are because people who complain <laughs> remain. So you remain where you are. And it's a vicious cycle. And you wonder why time has passed you by. And what is time? Time is a space periodic in which an assignment is birth and an assignment must be completed. That's what time is. And so time passes you by. Assignments are completed. And you become frustrated and can't seem to find your way forward. But when you're first invested time in clarity sessions that allow you to even have an idea of where exactly you're going to, and where you're going to is not void of your identity. So you can never have a vision without taking into cognizance who you are. Because your assignment, all right, your vision is tied to you. And you must understand something else. Let me say this very quickly. You have one vision. One vision, but many assignments. So don't get it confused. You have one vision in life, but God will give you many assignments along the timeline of your vision. So today, it might be students you're dealing with. Tomorrow, it will be a new geographical subsets that you're facing. It might be something else that you're doing. It might be consulting. It might even be in the marketplace. Remember, every assignment is given to equip you on the journey of your vision. So now let's go back to our tripod, the vision, the mission, and the values. So the vision has to be clear. You have to have a degree of understanding. And it's not just knowing or seeing the vision. It's understanding the vision. Understanding the vision requires that you own the vision. It's impossible for you to own what is not tied to your identity. So it's a thing of the heart. So your vision runs from your heart. All right? Now, having been cleared about your vision, it now enables and empowers you to be able to develop a methodology to attain that vision. Lady and gentlemen, that's what is called your mission. So your mission is the methodology of attaining your vision. Your mission, therefore, now involves your strategy, your planning, your capabilities, your competence, your trainings, your skills, your innate giftings, your networking, your, your, your team building, and every single thing that you find in that space. Now, whilst you're in the place of that space of your mission, 
what must you do? There are three things that you must do. Can I go over them very quickly? The three things that you must do in the place of your mission. Number one, and, and this, this stems from my one of, if you've been around me long enough, you will know where I'm going to right now. Matthew 7, 7. You must, the first thing you must do is you must ask. The second thing you must do is you must seek. And the third thing you must do is you must knock. And so somebody say after me, ask, 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 ask. seek, 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 and knock. 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 So somebody, so somebody say to me right now, Mr. AU, what does that have to do with the mission? Well, I tell you what it is. The first thing that you do is you begin to ask questions as regards how to best go about your mission. Because questions unveil you to you. Remember, at the heart of everything that you're doing is your heart, your identity. Questions unveil you to you. They unveil your strengths, your competencies. They unveil your preferences. They unveil your idiosyncrasies and your inclinations. They unveil what is required of you for you. They also unveil what you need to get because it is the knowing where your idiosyncrasies are that you know what you need addition to. It's the knowing your strengths that you know what to avoid. It's the knowing your strengths that you know what to strengthen. And so when you ask questions, and those questions you must be, like I will always say, you must be brutally honest about those questions. When you ask those questions, those questions are designed to jet propel you to seek. Any question that doesn't get you seeking was not a genuine question. So if you want to lie to yourself and you ask yourself soft questions that don't lead you anywhere, you'll find that after time, time, will, time is a revealer. Time will always show you who gave attention to something or not. Listen, the law of life is anything you give attention to, you will have some significant level of progress in it. So it's advisable that you give attention to what you're naturally gifted at. Because every time you give attention to anything that you're doing that you're not naturally given at, the law of nature is practice makes perfect, you will get better at it. But every time you give attention to what you're naturally gifted at, you will become great at it. The world doesn't have time for good or better. The world will only stop, salute, and stand at greatness. That's why the Bible says, let your light shine, that kings may be drawn to them. Kings are not drawn to have current. Kings are not drawn to candle lights. Mm. Things are not drawn to, to your phone lights. Your lights must be so bright. In other words, you must be so great that it arrests the attention of everybody that it needs to arrest the attention of. So it's impossible. Listen, listen, I've said this many times before. There are certain things that you will never be able to find answers to unless you're functioning at the best level of yourself for time. So you ask questions that help bring you to the best level of yourself. The world does not have time for mediocres. I hope you know that. The world does not have time for just show by, Johnny, Johnny just go by, guys. The world only has time for people that are functioning in the area of their greatness. So you become a voice. Now let's 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 stay focused on the vision. So you ask questions unveil you to yourself. When you ask, the jet propels you to seek. Seeking nearby is where you begin to find the answers to the questions. So you find you need capacity. You need to go take a training. You find that you need experience. You need to become an intern. You need to take. You need to volunteer. You need to get a job. For those of, for people that think that they, should, they were born MDCOs, I tell them go get a job because somewhere in that job you build the prerequisite experience to be able to function as an MDCO later. Jobs, everything in your timeline has its purpose and its place. Don't get it mixed up. Questions, your seeking is what helps you now build capacity. After that capacity has been built, you are now well prepared to knock at the doors of opportunity. It is the knocking at the door of opportunities that sounds as a signal for those opportunities to be open to you. And when those opportunities are open to you, because you have been well prepared, your competence level has been built from threshold and elevated to differentiating levels of competency, you can now not just seek those opportunities, not just find those opportunities, not just utilize those opportunities, but maximize those opportunities. So that's what you do in the 
mission aspect. And what do the values do for you? Everything. The values are simply the cardinal walls that determine what you can do and what you cannot, what you can do. The values will determine what kind of strategy you can undertake. Your values will determine whether you will pound a day old baby to make one billion naira, or whether you think smart and be strategic and walk to make money. Your values will determine whether you will sleep with everybody just to get a raise, or whether no, you say this is not me, and I will show I will only be accepted if I show competence or if I'm competent for it. Your value will allow you to not be able to give a kickback or a bribe and say, no, if we're going to get that contract, we'll, we'll get it on merit. And if we can't get it on merit, then we don't want to be a part of it. No matter how juicy it seems, no matter how juicy it looks, your values will guide the kind of pathway that your mission will take you through on the journey to attaining your vision. And that... So that really wasn't what I wanted to share with you. I don't even know how you got me talking about that um, charity. Take your time. I didn't even really want to talk about all of that. I told you I had a game for you. It's six minutes past. Okay. Eight. We have about 15 more minutes. I have a game for charity. And depending on how charity does, I'll come to Paul and I'll come to Gideon. And then we'll, have, we'll go back to serious conversation. And by 8.30, we'll be done. So charity, are you ready? Now, these are the rules of the game. But to be all right? To be strong, I'm this, these are the rules of the game. So we're talking about leadership. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, and I'm going to call a letter. What you're going to do is take that letter and take a word that stands with that letter and give me a quick pitch on something that has to do with leadership. So, for example, if I say A, I would expect that you say something like authentic. Every leader has to be authentic because leadership is oh, wow. on the heart and has to give me the oh, wow. if, oh, I say, wow. if I say D, you have to come up with a word immediately and you have to talk about that word immediately. So my question to you is, are you ready? <laughs> Am I? <laughs> are you ready? All right, so I need, okay. those in the I need those in the audience to begin to suggest letters to me. All right, let's see. Let's see. Oh my they had God. no idea this was coming. They had no idea this was coming. They didn't know. They thought they were coming to come and talk about leadership. And, you know, they did that. None of them knew this was coming. All right. Okay, so I'm going to come to you. And, and everybody will get to do. So, Gideon, don't think you're exempted from this. Charity, <laughs> we're going to start with. My next one is from we're going to start with letter T. Okay. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Letter T. Go, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, T, 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 T. What can I find? Teacher. Yeah, that's very easy. Um, a leader is a teacher, yes. Because leadership is people's business. And now, if you're going to, um, you're directing people and leadership, you're, um, as a leader, you, you have a vision of which you're directing people to. So, um, as a leader, you're going to have to, uh, like Paul always said, um, building people. You're going to have to, you're taking people from where they are to where they ought to be. So, um, um, uh, one of uh, 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 the skills, Yes, of a leader is the leader is a teacher. You're going to teach them value. You're going to teach them um, what they would require to take them from all where right. they are to where they all are right. to be. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. You got that. You got that. You got that. So I'm still I'm still with you, Charity. I'm not quite done with you. I'm still okay. with you. And somebody somebody just suggested another letter for you to go on. So F. Uh, <laughs> there's no word. There's no word called. Uh... <laughs> F, 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 F. Give me a minute. Um... Give you a minute. Uh, your time is up. Give you a minute. You're supposed to come up with the word like right away. Let me go over to Paul. Let me go over to Paul. Um, let me go over to Paul. Paul W. Wonderful. Win, 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 win. The word win, W-I-N. Every leader has to 
attain results. By not attaining results, you lose. Right? So if, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the word win represents attaining of results, right? It is, it, you can't just win, you just uh, have tasks and lose, lose, lose. You will lose influence as well, right? So you've, as a leader, you've got to have that win perspective. You must win with the people. You must win. The, can you hear me? You, can, you must win with the people, ensure that the tasks are being gotten and that the people. Can you hear me? We can, we can hear you. We can hear you. So we can win, right? We have that right. We have yes, that win. right. We can win. Okay, so hold on, Paul. I'm going to jump over to Gideon right now. Gideon has been chilling all evening. It's time to run Gideon in. Gideon. J. Uh, judgmental. A leader should not be judgmental. He should try to listen to people, try to get in across to seeing their weaknesses, but then amplifying their strengths. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna come back to um charity. <clears throat> Sorry, charity, your final one. Um but, but I hope people can hear me. I hope people can hear me. Yeah, we heard you. We heard you, we heard you. We heard yes, you. yes, we heard okay. you. Yes, we heard you. <clears throat> we heard you, good one. All right, let me come to charity. Charity X. Oh my goodness. That that was that lady. Charity's laughing. Charity's laughing. She's looking like she's looking like X, like, oh my god, that's the mistake you just give me. That letter letter. I thought you like it. Oh, as in, as in, no. Charity can come up with X. Okay. Okay, let's 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 spend that. Let's spend that. Um, uh, somebody said, somebody said, uh please. Please, easy on Miss Charity, please. <laughs> 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 um, 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 Chiamaka says, Chiamaka says, you will judge issues now. <laughs> uh, okay, so let, let me replace X with you. Um, so, Charity, you. That is you're really what i am i'm really freaking out um, <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay okay okay, okay. <laughs> <This game, man. laughs> Um, okay, so you can't think of, okay, what about G? What about G? What about G? Great. Um, so, so uh, Chema can say you could have used your lifeline, you could have called a friend, you could have nominated, oh. I mean, leaders, <laughs> leaders collaborate, leaders collaborate, so you could have collaborated, you could have oh, asked for a friend, exactly. I never said I, I, I didn't know I've got lifelines, I didn't know I've got well, lifelines. Well, leaders, leaders <laughs> explore. Leave this explore. Okay, okay, so, okay. So, so uh Joy says, can we suggest the word for them? By all means, Joy, we're all in this together. We have two no. more minutes on this game. But all means you can go ahead and suggest. But bottom line is, bottom line is, um uh well done, charity. Well done, charity. You are, I mean, it's not easy to just answer on the spot and be taken on a words. Um, I do this from time to time. No guest ever sees this coming. Nobody ever expects it. And uh, it just also just shows, chapels us and gets us ready, all right? So <laughs> somebody said, G, get up. Somebody said, G, get up. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. Well, um, so, I, I said great. Um, yeah. What can I say? What can I? Okay, I think um, leaders should be. Um, I want to say great at what they do. You know, in order to mm -hmm. 
gain credibility. They are going to be, okay, no, let me substitute great for good. Good. Let me substitute, yes, yes. Leaders ought to be good at what <laughs> they do <laughs> if they're going to gain credibility because um, um, people are not going to just, you're not just going to tell people things. People are going to watch you. So they're going yeah. to learn from you mm. by your actions, by how you handle things. So you're going to, um, yeah, you just have to be good at what you do if you're going to bring, gain credibility. That's right. That's awesome. Right. Okay, so I just had a message in our inbox from Princess, and I really don't know why Princess is gonna make it to the studio. She says you all are amazing. Thank you so much, Princess. We miss you. We wish you were here. Um, and um, whatever it is, let's uh, the same prayer that we prayed for Gideon yesterday. We should have prayed that prayer for you as well, so that you have to be here as well. As well. All right. Okay, so uh, we have a comment here from um, Jennifer Bassi. Jennifer says we want to play the game too. <laughs> okay, so so what, what the, here's the thing: you have the benefit of not being on the hot seat. Well, guess what, Jennifer? Hit me up with the scope to leadership leadership conversation. Let me have L. Give me L. Give me L. Shoot, shoot, L, 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 Jennifer, Jennifer, L, right now. You see, she's taking all the time. Okay, so now, whilst we're waiting for that to come in, uh, whilst we're waiting for that to come in, we're slowly rounding up. We have about 14 more minutes. I'm going to start with um, Paul, and I want to ask you something. Yeah. Uh, I think before you get, before you get really serious, I, I think you have a, um, a very awesome awesome audience i mean the follow the feedback is amazing but they've not noticed that you are the only one drinking on they've not noticed <laughs> <laughs> that is true <laughs> that is true <laughs> can you imagine look, look, look at Gideon. can you just imagine okay so I'm, I'm i'm done drinking the glass is empty <laughs> i'm done drinking Okay, well, 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 don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll make this happen when we get together physically. You know, we'll have we'll have <laughs> drinks in in, in some time. All right, so I'm gonna. Start, there's something I want us to do yeah. for the next uh, 30 minutes. I'm gonna start with Paul and then go around everyone. Uh, Paul, I want you to tell us your legacy statements. Um, oh, oh, Paul ran out of the room. <laughs> Paul, Paul left the building. <laughs> Okay, this is what I want from you guys. Um, I want you. I want you to. I want you to picture your 90th birthday. You are 90 years old. You have Kate and Kane. Everybody gathered around, all nicely dressed. The food is amazing. The small chops is off the hook. The chicken is is amazing, and the music is oh my goodness, it's heavenly. You've got people that you have not seen in a long time. They've got all your friends, all of them hovering around the same age of 90. You know, and it's amazing to see how, how everybody has aged. Jennifer is not the Jennifer that we know now. Jennifer is all gray and still trying to be a babe, but, you know, she's old now. You know, everybody's <laughs> old now. And then they ask two of your closest friends and two people that worked with you walked under you to talk about you what would you like to hear them say i'm going to start off with um charity then i'll come to gideon charity what okay. would you like your legacy statement to be okay um I'm 90, I'm 90 years, I'm old and gray, right? Yes. Um, a life well lived for me would be, um, okay, Jennifer has delivered. <laughs> okay. A life well lived for me at that age would be, I would like people to um, say that, yes, um, through me, the, um, people were able to, to become, people were able to get a life, people were able to get direction. <laughs> my vision, two, uh, my vision, two no, things no, that no, I, I no, want. No, 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 
No, charity. Okay. I want okay. you to say it. Charity did X, Y, Z. Remember, they're talking about the okay. past. Yeah. So I don't want you okay. to say, um, you know, I want to be. No, charity built schools. Charity gave scholarship. Charity empowered okay. us. Charity motivated us. It has to be specific and it has to be in the past. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Ahead, okay. All right. Um, uh, it, uh, it will be that um, charity um, picked seemingly disadvantaged people. Yes, disadvantaged. Um, why I, I say disadvantaged? Like, let me explain the category of people I call disadvantaged. Again, it could be the orphans, it could be displaced, it could be, you know, people um, who had um, fell out, you know. Charity picked those disadvantaged people, gave them a home, gave them a home, mentored them to greatness, men mentored them to become what they are today, mentored them, showed them the path in love, compassion, and um, through her, they were able to live, they were able to find their life. Through her, they were able to find their footing. Yes, that's, that's one thing I, I, I think people would say. And one other thing is um, charity builds a community of um, women who from nothing, they grew together to, um, to attain the heights that they, 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 that they have now, to become charity aided them, charity mentored them, grew a community of people and you can find them now in place of leadership, doing at the aspects of wherever they are, if they are in business, they are the aspects, if they are in politics, governance, leadership, they are the aspects, you know, women uh, breaking the, the, the uh, um, glass ceilings and the biases to stand out and lead other people, you know, to greatness. Yes, that would, I think that would be the legacy statement. Okay, so here's what, here's what you're going to do for me, right? Um, charity. Okay. You are, you're not going to take, if you need to go back and watch this, 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 this video will always be up on our walls, right? I'm not taking sure. it down, so you can always cut this video. If you need to go and watch this video and record what she said, I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down and put it where you can see it every day. The next time I'm going to be talking to you, I want you to tell me verbatim, verbatim, what it is that you have said. And then thereafter, the conversations we'll be having now. Now I've just I've just put you in a mentorship program, right? The conversations okay. we'll be having after now will now be how you will connect the dots to those things. Because I will be very candid with you. You've said a lot of awesome stuff, but you've also said a lot of things that are hanging. And what I want you to do is now be able to put 10 pegs to the tent that is hanging so that it can, it can be secure. And so that when the wind comes, it doesn't blow. And I want you to put steps on the ladders so that it's now usable as a ladder. And with each step, you can now connect growth, all right, from where you are to where you want to be. So you're going to create, you're going to write down that legacy statement and I promise you that I'm committed to following you up on it. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to go over Thank to Gideon. You. I'm going to go over to Gideon. Gideon, 90 year old Gideon, he's still wearing those suits. He's still got those ties. I don't know if we still have the same haircuts, though, but 90 year old Gideon, <laughs> what would you like to have said at your 90th party, 90 year old party? Okay, so I'm 90, and um, I want it to be said that um, Gideon was the reason people did not give up, a lot of people did not give up, that Gideon took the seed of hope in a lot, lot of people alive. Gideon, that 45 years earlier, Gideon became president, and that he changed the trajectory of Nigeria's political space. I want it to be said that 
um, I don't want it to be remembered in history books that, you know, we had the Nam Yazihwes and the Wolowos. I want Gideon to also be a part of history such that we don't have to go back to the past. And also in Africa, I want it to be that Gideon's style has been replicated in African countries such that while we don't know the history of the Mandelas, we also know that we have Gideon who took a step and led through transitional leadership. Those are the things that I want to remember. Thank you. Amazing, amazing, Gideon. And like I said to, like I said to Charity, um, I want you to write it down and I want you to send it to me. Uh, I want you to put it on paper, to write it down. Um, the things you want to do in the political space, the things you want to do by way of impact and influence, I want you to write it down and I want you to send it to me. And um, for everyone to, you know, Chemaka said, you want to, I'm going to write down my own legacy statement to Chemaka by all means, write it down and send it to me. Mail it to me, text it to me, um, use any of the platforms in which you are connected to me and send it to me. But this is what I will also do for everybody. This is what I will also have you do for everybody that wants to do this. When you write your legacy statement, all right, listen carefully, guys. This is the last thing I'll say before I close. When you write your legacy statement, I want you to write four things, four things that will take you on the journey to attaining that legacy. Because the process of attaining that legacy is called becoming. And I'm going to be talking about becoming next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm going to be talking about becoming. The process, purpose is given when a man is born. For a purpose, a man is born. Purpose ends when a man dies. The man that dies without becoming is forgotten in the annals of history. The man that goes along this journey and this timeline of becoming and becomes births a legacy. So in life, you will go through the process of becoming, sustaining your becoming, and thereafter births a legacy. But as you write your legacy statement, hear me now, guys. There are four things I want you to write for me. Create a table. Create a table, the four things I want you to write. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is it. The first things that you're going to write, you're going to tell me in being able to go along the journey of becoming, to birth in the legacy that you want, what are the things that you're going to stop doing? Number one, stop. Number one, stop. Write that down. Stop. Somebody should write it down in the comment section for me. Stop. So after you've written your legacy statement, however beautiful it is, the next part is you're going to start with, number one, the things that you will stop doing. For some of you, for your legacy to be like that by the time you're 90, you're going to need to stop eating some things you're eating now. <laughs> Now, I'm sure you didn't think of that, right? You're focusing on the money. No. Because which which body are you going to use to carry you to that age? If you're not taking care of that body now, which body will you have? Which body will you use when you're 90? God will borrow you another body. So if you don't start doing some things now, the vehicle by which you will carry purpose and destiny also has to be maintained. So... Think of the thing. What things are what things are you going to stop doing? After you've listed all those ones out, for some people it's not much. For some people it's a lot. For some people it's a lot. The next thing that you do, what are the things that you want to start doing? So the first is stop. The second is start. You can't start until you have stopped certain things. You can't fill a bucket until you stop the leak. 
So you must stop certain things and then start certain things. Because nature abhors the vacuum. Habits must be replaced. Energy is never lost. Energy is only redirected. So when you stop something, there must be something that you are starting. So what do you need to start? What do you need to start? Number three, to save time, what do you need to do less of? There are some things that you don't need to cut up, but you just need to do less of them. What do you need to do less of? And number four, what do you need to do more of? So stop, start, less of, more of. Stop, start, less of, more of. When you've written that, send it to me. Let's go on a journey for the next few months that will position you radically. That will bring you through the process of asking, seeking, and knocking. Mm. And that will do you. When you do that, your legacy statements will reflect three things. Your genuine legacy statements will reflect three, will reflect three things. I don't know if I should talk about it now or I should just leave it to another time. But there are three things that your legacy statements should will reflect. After you've asked, you seek, you knock, then you there are three things you will become. So there are three things you will do to become three things, either of three things. Three things you do to become either of three things. And those four things, apart from those three things, are all embedded in those three things that you do to become three things. What th should I talk about the three things or we should keep it to later? Yes, Time please. is gone. Time is gone. Time is gone. Time is gone. There's no time. <laughs> Eh? There's no time now. You just quickly time. share it. You just quickly share. No, no. Eh. Okay. If I if I see the audience, if the audience says let's a you please let's share, then I'll share. I can't see the audience <laughs> telling me to share. If the audience, if no, 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 three people just tell me, oh, yeah, let's share, let's share, let's share, I'll share. I can't see them. I can't see them. Let's share. I can't see them. I can't see them. That's somebody said. What's this? We'll buy time. <laughs> Somebody said, please don't leave it. <laughs> Paul said, let's share. Okay, Paul must be having some network issues. All right, so, so there are three things you do. You ask, you seek, and you knock to become to become three things. And let me talk about the three things and I'll close, I'll, I'll close and release you guys for tonight. No, please do that. The three things, the three things that you do, you ask, you seek, or you knock. And when you've done that, under the guise of starts of stop, starts less and more, you mm -hmm. become three things. The first thing that you become is that you become a light. The second thing you become is that you become a voice. And then the third thing that you become is that you become a bridge. What is a light? Light is indicative of illumination. Illumination makes for clarity. Clarity allows for speed in the right direction because proper direction is, never, is always given from the front and never given from the back. Light therefore speaks of leadership. So when you've asked, you've sought, and you've knocked, you, you become a light. Light is one that is available to inform a people, to raise their level of thinking and their level of consciousness. Light influences, light illuminates, that everywhere you go, you will become a source of clarity for people. People will be drawn to you because of the clarity they get from you. So people want to, they want to hear from you because you break things down for them. Many times, hear this, people need your light. To, people need to use your light to find their way to their own light. 
when you are in light, you are significantly influential. The second thing that happens is you become a bridge, a voice. The Bible says that the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. In other words, as a leader, you are able to galvanize the people in the direction that you want them to go because your voice represents authority. But it's not just the decibel of your voice or the texture of your voice that they're interested in. It is the dependability of your voice, the integrity of your voice, the resilience of your voice, the truth that your voice carries, the hope that your voice resonates. Remember, a leader is a dealer in hope. The hope that your voice resonates. And so when you become a voice, you become a point, a clarion call of reasoning. You become an, a source of inspiration to a generation even yet unborn. You become a thought lead and an authority in an area that brings hope to a people. You become a voice. And then my favorite part, a bridge. A bridge is that that connects you from where you are from the place of your despondency and the place of your now to the possibilities of tomorrow, your inherent possibilities of your potential. That's what a bridge is. A bridge is that one that takes you from where you are right now and connects you to all that you can become. The, a bridge is the leverage that you have that cuts the distance and cuts and removes the obstacles between your present situation and predicament and puts you in a place of advantage Either way, what a bridge does to you is that it removes. So a bridge could be, you will be a mentor, you will be a, a, a coach, you will be one that meets people where they are, but you won't leave them where they are, a bridge. I learned many years ago, many years ago, expressly, expressly heard from God that these are three things that are called to be, a light, a voice, and a bridge. If you ever see any of my stuff, you see the LVB there. And so now, for many people that wonder what LVB means, now you know. A light, a voice, and a bridge. And those three things speak of one thing to the people that come in contact with you. You become an advantage to them. So the day that you stop giving advantage to them, you cease to be a light, you cease to be a voice, and you cease to be a bridge. So that the day you take advantage of anybody around you, you are not a light, you are not a voice, you are not a bridge. The day you mislead anybody around you, you are not a light, you are not a voice, you are not a bridge. The day that you create more problems rather than solve problems, you become the problem that they are trying to solve rather than being the solution to the problems that they have. You become a light, you cease to be a light, you cease to be a voice and you cease to be a bridge. My question is, are your present political leaders, are they lights? Are they voices? Are they bridges? Your leadership at whatever level round about you, are they lights? Are they voices? Or are they bridges? I didn't call anybody's name. Answer for yourself and determine which one you want to be. Having said that, guys, I am so thankful for everyone that has been a part of today's episode. Absolutely thankful. This is one hour, 38 minutes. Way over the time that we started later. But every single second was worth it. I am so blessed to have everybody here that has joined us from you know, all the different platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, they'll join us. My special guest, Charity Appan, my newly adopted daughter. And uh, <laughs> thank I'm, you. I'm raised them into the popular champions. To give you the great thank you. To, 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 to Princess, who is in the waiting room and for some reason cannot make it into the studio, but she's been in the waiting room all along. She's been watching. Right, but I can't see a visual, so I couldn't bring her into the studio. Blessing, thank you so much. We will do this again at some point, and um, I will have you properly coming. All right. Uh, thank you to all my super amazing guests. You've been amazing. Thank you for sharing your time, your heart. Thank you for all the things that you have, you know, brought forward. It's it's super, super, super amazing. 
I am so grateful to all our audience, guests, and everybody that's dropped nuggets. I mean, Facebook is buzzing. I really, I really can't even take everybody's comments at this point in time. It's just on fire. Thank, thank you, Blessing Otoro. Thank you so much, um, Chiamaka. You know, and everybody that wants to be a part of this, please send me a message, whether it's a direct DM on Facebook, whether you want my email address, maybe I should just put up my email address and just send me a mail. Let's, at this, I will put you on my platform. We'll walk through this. You know, and this applies to your personal life, it applies to your businesses, it applies to stuff. I've done this for, for I, I mean, I am, I, I mean, a couple of guys here know me. I'm, I'm well grounded and tested in this. This is the heart of what makes for seven star performance in any area of your life, whether it is your corporate life, whether it's your personal life. This is what it makes for seven star performance in any area of your life. So write it down, send it to me, and we will take it from there. Hey guys, I really have to go. Really have to go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My cousin all the way in Texas, Usain, thank you so much. Energy is never lost. It's only redirected. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, my darling. I love you to the bone. All right. Okay. So um, I, I really have to go, guys. You guys can keep somebody here forever. But I love you to never lose. Thank you so much. Next Sunday, we're talking about becoming. What exactly is becoming? What is becoming all about? What, what, what does AU mean by becoming? We'll talk about becoming, and it promises to be amazing, super amazing. That's my personal promise to you. So look out for the flyers, share the flyers, invite as many people as you can, people that you, you think need to hear and just resonate on this level of thought with you. Um, get your staff, for those of you that have organization, get your managers to listen in. Becoming is very, it will blow your mind. I have truths that I've shared on different platforms across this country and without this country, and it's always been phenomenal. So get as many people to be a part of this. And um, I'm looking forward to connecting with you next Sunday as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to take the final comments here before I run from um, uh, from Chiamaka. Amazing session. What the wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Charity, uh, Mr. Gideon, Mr. Paul. And of course, to um, Madam Princess behind the scenes. She was our behind the scene person today, our hype person. All right. And to you, especially, so A, for putting together this live transforming sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm just going to do this before I go. I just realized that I hadn't actually given my guests opportunity to say final words before they leave. I, I'm better brought up than this now. So um, I'm going to have a, <laughs> I'm going to have a, 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 a charity go. Uh, charity, uh, your, your final thoughts, and then I'll have Gideon give his final thoughts as well. Paul, Paul, you can type your final thoughts on Facebook. Princess, send us your final thoughts as well. I'll read them out. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you very much. It was an amazing session. I personally learned a lot. I came here to learn, and I must say, yes, I learned a lot. Now I would have to go back and put into writing my legacy statement. I've actually thought of um, my vision, you understand, but never really thought of sitting it, um, sitting down to, you know, break it down, be specific about it, be um, intentional about it. So um, now, after now, I would have to go back and do that. Thank you very much, Mr. AU. Yes, we are called to be a light, a voice, and a bridge. I took that very personal. Thank you very much. It, um, thank you for the privilege. And yeah, thank you, Mr. Gideon. Mm. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. So, All right, thank you. Yeah, Gideon. Go All right, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. AU, for on this session. I must say, I really learned a lot as well, and I'll go back to practicalize what I learned, and I watched the pathway of champions. That's why I guess I don't want to say that if they've always done what they've been doing, always get the same result they've been getting. So it's time to actually change the way and adopt the principles of vision, values, and mission to where we want to go to. So thank you very much, Charity, Princess, and Paul for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, the network almost had you speaking in tongues there for a while. Um, but, you know, God, God gives us the spirit of interpretation. And so we're able to interpret and get the bulk of your message. Thank you so much. 
All right, everyone. It's time to, it's time to go. It's uh, a few minutes, nine o'clock. Have yourself a super week ahead. Stay blessed. Look out for the uh, Connect Flyers. Share them. Invite as many people next Sunday. I'm back, and it's going to be all about becoming. Catch you up and keep walking the path. Good night, everyone.